Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today at the Open Education Consortium's quarterly membership meeting. Please look around the screen so that you know what to do with this interface. We have quite a full agenda today as usual. Um, please feel free to ask questions in the chat window or you can ask questions by clicking on the talk button on the top left hand side. Do you all see that? Okay, so let's start with the agenda first. The first thing we're going to do is to recap of the 24 activities. We'll then have Martin Weller give a presentation on the GoGN network. We'll report on the OECX Open MOOC pilot. And we'll talk about the launch of the Open Education Information Center and talk about the Open Education Implementation Strategy, followed by a summary of the Open Education Global Conference. Then we'll open the floor for questions, comments, discussion items from members. However, feel free to ask questions at any time during the session. After each session, you're free to um, have questions. So don't wait. Just ask questions whenever you can. All right, so we had many new and exciting activities in the year of 2014. First, we had an exchange program with the League of Arab States. This project was supported by the U.S. State Department. The focus of the exchange program was to train women faculty members from Arab states on e-learning and open education. The program was called the E-Learning Pioneers. We, used, we created a training program for them so that they would become experts on open education. And then there was the Open Education Professional Directory. We have more than 300 experts in the directory right now. If you're not listed, please go ahead and register yourself. The directory works to support collaborative projects in open education by identifying who has what expertise and where they are. And you can browse by expertise or you can browse by region of the experiences. And then there's the Campus Virtual de la Americas, where there is a centralized repository for resources in Spanish. And it's supposed to bring together and it's supposed to serve all of Latin American countries. Marcella from the OE Consortium is working on this project. And it's, it, it offers a comprehensive array of resources on learning and open education. And our past Open Education Week was in March 2015. There were institutions, individuals, and organizations from about 40 countries that participated. There were hundreds of local and online events. And the analysis of the tweet, Twitter activities shows that we reached 1.9 million people with Open Education Week. Now, right now we're in the process of conducting a survey to figure out when the best time of the year would be to have Open Education Week. Because some have told us that in their part of the world, March is just not the best time. So we would love to also hear from you guys. Please do participate in the survey. You can see the survey link in the chat window. Igor just posted that.
And this was a really big move for us. For years, we were talking about search discoverability of OERs. And in the past year, we collaborated with Merlot to integrate the search system with the Merlot database. So basically, Merlot has agreed to take all the search services for us. You can still do the same type of search on the consortium website. You can search the courses by languages, by fields, by discipline. And now what you can do is you can also search all of Merlot database, or you can choose to search from only the consortium member institutions. We're hoping that this collaboration will bring better, uh, better um, search into open educational resources and have things maintained perfectly. And then we set up a website for Marshall McLuhan. His daughter contacted us to archive all of his lecture videos, all the terms, et cetera, to keep on the legacy. What we were able to do is to archive all the content and apply an open license to it so that things are now OER. OK, so that is a very simple recap of 24, 24 connectivities. And now we're, we're going to have Martin Weller talk about the GoGN network. Now, Martin, I'm sure you all know, wears many, many hats. So I'll just introduce one today. He is the academic lead for the GoGN network. And now, without further ado, Martin, it's all yours. Uh, thanks very much. I've got a bit of a cough, so if I fall apart and start coughing badly, my apologies. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, GoGN network, which we've taken over recently, and I'll explain a bit of that. I'm not too sure how much people know about GoGN here, so I'll probably do a fairly quick presentation, and then we might have time for a couple of questions afterwards. Um, so a bit of the background. So uh, Fred Mulder at OUNL was the UNESCO OER chair, and uh, as part of that role, he set up the uh, GoGN network uh, and worked with Robert Schuer and, and Jos Rickers from OUN as well. It was funded by Hewlett um, about three years ago, I think it was set up, I should know that stuff. Um, and its aim really is to develop research expertise in the OER field. So it's a, it's a network for PhD students who are researching OERs. And so there are kind of criteria about what you need to do in order to be able to join the network. You need to be doing, uh, you need to be doing a PhD uh, in a relevant field and have supervisors in place. So the idea is that by joining the network, you get access to other other uh, PhD students, and also there's a, an experts um, field. So you can join the network as an expert in OER research. And what they've been trying to do is link, have joint supervision with other members of the network. So you'll have a, a local supervisor and also then a supervisor from the network. And I think part of the aim of that really was to try and overcome some of the again, OERs and open education general is often uh, quite a new field for a lot of people. So a, a PhD researcher might be the only person in a university who's, who's interested in this field, and so they can often be working in isolation. So the idea was to try and build up this research expertise and spread it across the, globally across the network. Um, so Fred set that up uh, with Hewlett funding. <coughs> so, and then just jump back a bit. So I, I lead on the OER research hub at the Open University. Now, really, what this talk is about is a, a convergence of all those logos at the bottom that you see each time. So the OER research hub, um, funded by Hewlett, uh, just coming to the end after three years, and we're just about to go into a new phase, which I'll talk about. Um, and the idea of the OER research hub was to try and think about OERs have been around for over a decade, um, and people often make quite big claims about them, but often they don't back that up with, with evidence. And so we kind of we pulled together 11 hypotheses. We, we felt represented those kind of common beliefs that people have about OERs, and then worked with collaborations, mainly in the US, but also elsewhere, um, 
trying to find evidence to back up those those claims and we developed an, an evidence map and, and so on. That's based at the Open University in the UK. Um, and so there's a very similar aim really to the OER, so the aim of the OER Research Hub, the, the kind of overall aim was to really try and develop research in the OER field. We kind of felt it had reached a, a level of maturity the OER field that we should be able to have strong evidence to back up these claims. And it's interesting if, if you look through, for instance, uh, Rory McGreal's uh, OER Knowledge Cloud, a lot of the papers um, published in there are often claims about OER, but then they don't go on to back those claims up. So they say, so they might be about an OER project, and they say this will lead to savings, or this will lead to uh, democratisation of education and stuff. But then there's not the evidence to back that up. So we want to really try and start establish a strong evidence base for that. So you see, this is very similar aim. So whereas we want to develop research in the field, GoGM wants to kind of develop the research expertise within the OER field. So uh, last year, Fred retired from OUNL, um, and the GoGM was in need of a, a new home, and so they felt there was a kind of real natural fit with coming to us at, at the Open University. So you know, we've both been working with Hewlett, we know TJ Bliss at the Hewlett Foundation very well, and he was happy for it to come there. Fred's going to be a visiting uh, professor with us as well, so he can still be involved. But also there was a kind of a good match between the aims of the research hub, the, sort of the people we had, the expertise we had involved, and uh, what they needed from the, the GoGM. So we've just we've been in a kind of transition phase, and it's now more or less come over to us. There's still some bits just as we're, we're sort of finalising that, but it's now transitioned to us. <clears throat> so what the GoGN does is um, every year, as you probably know, every year they take a number of uh, students from the network to the, to the OE Global Conference. So a lot of them were in Banff um, back in April, and they get them to, to present to each other and work on their presentations together and their research. It's a, it's a chance to meet each other and meet experts in the field. Um, so there's a really nice kind of fit there because we were there uh, from the, the OER Research Hub as well um, and managed to meet a lot of the students there. So I think that work will still continue. So briefly, the, the team at the OU, so I'll be the academic lead. Um, the, the coordinators will be, uh, you may know some of these people, uh, Bayer de Arcos and Rob Farrow, both of whom work on the OER Research Hub and were in Banff. And Natalie Eggleston will provide the, uh, the admin support, and she's also on the OER research hub. So they're people who are you know, well acquainted with the OER field and a lot of the people in that area. So <clears throat> we've been talking about um, where to take the OER research, uh, where to take uh, GoGN. Um, and I think the point is that it's working very well as it is, so it's not that it's in need of, of drastic change. Um, so the first thing, so we had one year's funding from uh, Hewlett to, to cover this transition phase, so and they've said that they'd like to carry on funding it. So the first thing is to, do is to secure further funding. Um, there's a very strong message when we were in Banff talking to the, uh, the PhD students there that they wanted more online activity. It felt like there wasn't much happening in between the seminars. So um, we'd like to do that, run regular webinars and get people to come along to those that cover a range of topics, perhaps get experts in to come and speak to them and make them open events, They're not just available for GoGM people, but also others can come in. But so that people who are part of the network feel that they're kind of having regular contributions and regular contact. Uh, I'd quite like to shift it to be more of a peer supported network so that, that those people in that network come together or their own accord, whether that's using Twitter and hashtags or the Ning platform or whichever but also us helping to facilitate that and maybe move away a bit from the, some of the more formal structures that were put in place early on. So uh, for, for instance, at the start of the project, we had institutional partners, so in, whole institutions could sign up. And I think we'll move away from that um, and just be more about individual students signing up and maybe lessen some of the, the demand, the requirement to have a supervisor from the network as well. I think that's fine if, if we can get one, but I don't think it needs to be a requirement. I'd like to make it more of a kind of open network, increase the number of people in that network and have it be more kind of peer supported. Uh, and lastly, I, I mentioned OER Research Hub, the funding's coming to an end at the end of July um, and Hewlett are going to carry on funding us for a while uh, and partly that's to cover a transition to what to be um, what we're going to call now the Open Research Centre. So we want to investigate not just OERs but kind of 
broader aspects of open education as well, so that would include MOOCs, but also things like open data, open access, uh, open pedagogy. So um, I think that will match quite a lot of what we want in GoGM as well, so it's not just about OERs, and increasingly a lot of the applications we get are looking at things like MOOCs in developing countries, for instance, so I think it needs, it's not just OER focused. So I think there's a good uh, alignment between where we want to take the OER research hub and the GoGM network as well. So I'll leave it there. I've probably missed out loads of things, and you can ask me any questions. Thank you, Martin. Please click on the talk button or type in your questions in the chat window. Yeah, I will do, uh, Igor, thanks for the question, so Igor's asking what they need to do to join. It's probably best if I send you a link. Um, so there's a how to join, <coughs> how to join link that I'll just post in here. So basically you need to satisfy the conditions, um, which are that you need to uh, be doing a PhD in this area and have um, supervision in place. So we're not providing supervision. I mean, we will get a second supervisor often from the network, but and we're not. So we're not sort of taking over and offering PhDs. The, the PhDs are hosted at the host institution, um, and there are application forms for experts and researchers. Um, and if you're to be an expert, you need to demonstrate that you're, you've, you're you have some expertise in this in this field. Just on that, I think it's, um, we're going to have, a, and I'll tweet it out when we've got the link sorted, but we're going to have a, a webinar next Thursday, which is really open for anyone to come in and discuss um, where uh, the future direction of GoGN. It's William says on the website, it says send it to Joss, to Joss at AUNL. You know, Joss is just handling the final ones. We're probably going to, I was chatting to him yesterday actually, so we'll probably change that to a generic. Um, uh, GoGN email address. Um, yeah, so we're having a webinar next Thursday to discuss the future direction. So I think some of the stuff about how how open should the network be, you know, should you just allow anyone to join? You know, anyone's got a vague interest, that's fine. Though. So there's always a tension, I think, between uh, increasing the size of the network and having the people you you want and that network being a value within this. So I think that's something to be discussed. No, no, not at all. I mean, so it's from everywhere. So I've got uh, several of my students at the Open University are members of GoGN. It's really about developing a global expertise in the OER research field. Okay, so if you're not already a member, I'd just, I'd just like to do a final pitch to say sign up as an expert if you're not already a member. And if you have PhD students who are researching in this area or know of any, then uh, encourage them to join and, and come along. And I'll, I'll leave it there. Thanks, man. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Martin, for taking your time out to present on GoGM today. All right, then let's move on to the next agenda item. which is to report on the OECX Open MOOC pilot. So we planned on having the OECX pilot courses because we thought that Open MOOCs 
would be something very important for the consortium members and also to the broader open education community. Now, many members wanted to participate but in MOOCs but didn't have the opportunity. And they were talking and telling us that um, they would like some kind of platform and a platform where they can just test things out before they commit to the MOOC program fully. And we thought that this open MOOC program would be an opportunity for us to leverage existing OER and add benefits of interaction and data collection offered by the edX platform. And also it was an opportunity for us to combine open enrollment with open content to create a diverse array of open MOOCs. And we decided to go with the edX platform because, or for various reasons, but one of them was that they used an open source software. So there are eight courses in the OBCX pilot, one from the National Tsao University from Taiwan, one from the Hokkaido University in Japan. There was a community college, Anne Arundel Community College from the state. Tufts University from the U.S., Test India program. It's a collaboration um, of the of U.K. and India. And then there is the University University of Polytechnic in Madrid. So you can see that it's got a very good international mix representation from all over the globe. If you look at the course descriptions on the screen you'll see that some courses are in progress right now. Some will be starting very soon. So although some will be starting very soon, we decided to go ahead and do a survey with pilot open MOOC developers. We have completed all the plannings for the open MOOCs. And we found that the time commitment is significant. Um, there was at least 40 hours of um, instructional designers required into creating a MOOC. There was at least 40 hours of faculty time required. There was at least 40 hours of course facilitators required. Now, our suggestion or our requirement was that the university um, MOOC was um, based on OERs. So if they didn't have to redo all the videos, they needed only about 10 to 20 hours of video editing. However, if, you, if they decided to record the video from scratch, they needed at least 100 hours of shooting and editing. They required more than 10 hours of project managers, 10 hours of high-level administrators. So just from this, you can see that the time commitment was just really a lot for starting a, a MOOC course. Now, for these eight courses, the reuse of OERs varied. The range was about using 25% to about 100% of new content. And of course, you could lower costs when there was a lot more, um, when there was higher amount of OERs used. And new content was primarily new videos made specifically for the edX MOOC format. So even though the university did have the open courseware or OER course before, they had to redo the video to meet the edX MOOC format and all had to create some new content to fit the platform and requirements. So with the cost, the cost depended on the extent of modification of materials, and we found that the range was anywhere between $6,500 US dollars to even $100,000, and this is inclusive of staff time and resources. As you might have imagined, extensive video work was most expensive. And the cost went up with the increased requirements by edX.
Now, um, some of the impact point significance that we can draw from the pilot courses is that format of existing OER has a big impact on how well it is, how well it'll incorporate into edX. And the process is in very involved and evolving. Um, the first OECX course we planned has a, a different process for the latest OECX course. The process keeps evolving, and that is why we that is why modifying content to fit the edX requirement was a big deal, was a big issue for us. And the time for OEC staff on the basics of each MOOC was much higher than expected. Um, there was at least 40 plus hours per MOOC, and that's without counting the course development. Now, um, we're going to need to cover staff costs to continue OECX after the pilots are done. And we would love to get your comments on this. So this was the last slide for OECX report. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead. Ms. Sophia? Sophia, if you click on the talk button, on top left hand side, you can talk. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, sorry, I was just typing the question. So, thank you for your presentation. My question is when you say that there was no course development, but you, that you still needed 40 hours. Um, of dedication, both for instructional designers and, and staff members. What, what, what do you mean by no course development needed? Okay, so the arrangement we have with edX is that all the OECX courses and all the OEC members go through the consortium to have communication with edX so that they don't do direct communication with our members. So. Communication itself was a big deal, especially since, like I, met, like I just mentioned, the process kept evolving. So every time edX changed something, we had to work together with our members to modify the contents accordingly. So that's what took us many, many hours, just for communication, modification, et cetera. And that was not really about course development. It was just about meeting the needs for the, uh, the the material format. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, Willem just mentioned that Edix updates the platform every two weeks. Maybe <laughs> that's why. Well, Willem has a lot of experience with Edix because he um, PO Delft is on Edix. Susan just asked whether the full report will be available to everybody. The full report will be available fairly soon. It's not done yet. As soon as we're finished, you will hear from us um, on our website and via social network.
tutorial, are you asking um, what the format, what the proper format is for edX? Okay, um, I don't have detailed information on video specification for um, OCX other than the fact that many had to, many went through problems doing captioning for videos because that's one of the requirements. Maybe Willem can fill us in on the video specification. Thank you, Ellen. So the edX videos, um, they have to be uploaded to YouTube and then have to be uploaded to Apple and so that they can be downloaded as MP4 files. Another um, aspect that you might consider, Oreo, not to Apple, <laughs> sorry. So it should be uploaded to YouTube and have to be, what is it, Dylan? Able, sorry. <laughs> okay, and all videos need subtitles, transcripts. Uploaded to the course environment. And long videos are not recommended. Video, short, shorter videos would be recommended. Right. Um, so many of our members had longer videos. Um, they're just capturing of lectures themselves. But some decided to re-record the whole thing because they wanted to make very short videos with impact and they built course materials and quizzes around that short video so that is why they had to redo the whole thing right as Lillian just mentioned most videos that universities have they're too long any other questions So we have one person who's done an OECX pilot, and we've got um, Willem, who is an expert on the edX platform. And what else? This would be a good opportunity to ask questions. Okay, well then, why don't we move on, and if you have any other questions, you can shoot at the end of the session. So the Open Education Information Center. The Information Center is now launched and is available on the consortium website. If you go to Resources on the top menu bar, you'll see Information Center. So the Open Education Information Center, um, we are, the aim is to offer a hub of information for anything on open education. So 
there are three things that we offer here. Information on open education, calendar of events that are related to open education, and the forum to talk about issues in open education. If you visit the website, you'll see that information is organized to meet needs of different stakeholder groups. There are faculty, students, administrators, researchers, and policymakers. Now let's choose one topic from faculty. I'm going into technological concerns. And when you go into a page, you'll see that information is organized so that they're in questions and answer format. So what are the offering tools suitable? Um, how can I meet accessibility requirements? And you'll have a very short answer followed by more resources, multimedia resources, etc. And when you go all when you scroll all the way down on the page, you'll see a button that says join discussion or start a discussion. And that's when you can access the forum. In the forum, you can talk about some issues. Issues re related to the questions on the page. Now, if you go into the forum site separately, it works. But just yesterday, we realized that there was some glitch with the link between our website and the discussion forum. So right now, the link doesn't work. It'll be fixed within a couple of days. It's, it's a real, um, um, it's a very recent um, technology. <laughs> so our web director has gotten in touch with um, their developers, and we're fixing it right now. So both the Information Center and the forum, they're community efforts. So in the Information Center, there's a Submit Information button, where if you have a good information to share, submit them so that we can review and upload to the Information Center, the forum as well. Um, it would be great as an expert if, um, if you guys can um, answer as many questions as possible on the forum or just post questions on, on the discussion board. The Information Center is still a work in progress. We are uploading content still. It's, um, the whole community will be building content on it. So, We've got a lot to look forward to. Hopefully, you'll participate as well. Any questions on the Information Center? OK, then we'll get the questions at the end. We'll move on to the next item the implementation strategy. So the OER implementation strategy, um, the aim was to provide background to where we are in the global movement um, to identify areas of common agreement, areas of divergent views, identify strength, challenges, and what opportunities there are with demand, supply, capacity, and we needed feedback from the wider OER community. So this is what it looks like. The OER implementation strategy document, um, this Google Doc, they worked on this um, during our conference, during the global conference in Banff as well. That's the URL. Please go through them if you have any comments comments, um, you're more than welcome to send your comments in. The committee members are Nicole Allen, Delia Brown, Mary LaFleur, Cable Green, and Alex.
And our most recent event that was the Open Education Global Conference held in the beautiful Banff, Alberta, Canada. We had representation from 37 different countries. Of course, it was in Canada, so many people from Canada and the U.S. came. And Saudi Arabia was number three in the number of um, delegates. And you can probably attribute that reason, that to the fact that we had the Arab League project. Netherlands, UK, South Africa, Slovenia, Taiwan, France, Indonesia, Mexico, just from all over the world. And if you happen to miss it, or if you would like to recap what's going on, or if you would like to look something up from the conference, do visit the conference website. If you go to the presentation section on, on the website, you'll see the PowerPoint and papers for many. If you would like to hear more of the perspectives from other people, then you can go to the OE Consortium's website. There's a blog post that lists a lot of other blog posts from uh, about the OE Global. And again, Open Praxis offered us an opportunity to publish a, cup of, a, selected, a group of selected papers from the conference. So there were papers published on Open Praxis. Some presentations from OE Global. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the agenda item, which is to accept questions, comments, and discussion items from you guys. I'm just assuming that the silence is, because, is due to the fact that you are all very busy doing web browsing right now because Igor was kind enough to upload all the URLs that, <laughs> that had everything that we mentioned today. Uh, thank you, Glenda. That's great. Um, if you can add any type of information on anything, that would be wonderful. Oh, Sophia, you are doing web browsing. Okay. <laughs> okay, Willem, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Marianne. Okay, then. Oh, thank you, Glenda. Do share. So everything from the meeting we'll be sharing very soon, all the reports and everything. Do keep us, do keep posted to the, the consortium activities. You know where to find us. Follow us, Twitter, OE Consortium, Open Education Week. There's a Facebook and LinkedIn group as well. 
So do let us know what you guys are up to, and we'll make sure that you know what we're up to as well. Thanks, everybody. We'll finish your today.